first week before. So it goes to show that they do have the mental, the mental, mental, the mental fortitude. <laughs> See, I don't have the mental fortitude. I can't saying stop saying mental. I mental. love it though. If, if you, know. you guys remember, Match point, uh, match point Evos was a mythical creature we were talking a lot about. <laughs> exactly. Whenever their opponents are at match point, they just get so much better. That has been a thing, kind of. This might, it might make a recurrence right now. So now this brings us to the drafts. Still the same, same, same yep. bands from the first, mm -hmm. second, and third, uh, third game, yes. It's the same draft. At maybe here, Evos is looking for the Frederick pick, first pick because they want to prioritize the credit that gave them the win, but maybe leaving talent in the open for some is kind of risky too, right? Yeah. I mean, at this point, anything you go for is a risk, but you called it, Coach, you know, the Fredrin. We had this discussion off camera, by the way, and Coach Aldo was like, yeah, they can go for that. They can go for the Fredrin first pick instead of the Valentina. Valentina Roger, for, I, I think. Oh, yeah. Valentina and Roger. I think. I, I agree with uh, Valentina Roger. Because, Very yeah, you can see the value. Because they they pick Fountain and Roger. Huh? Yeah. You wanna keep going, coach? Evos' answers needs to be caught, right? But since Onik already has the Valentina, since Onik has already has the Valentina, they can't go. They can't go for the like the Grok, the Minotaur, the the cancellation on the clots, blazing duet. But let's see what Evos' glory is gonna pick. What's your prediction? It should be caught. I think still it should be caught, but it's kind of hard. Plot. And they cannot go for X Brock to right because of the Valentina. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah, that's why giving a Valentina to Onik is kinda tricky. We'll see. Oh, oh X Brock is Saramis. They don't care. They Actually, give two ult. <laughs> Actually this is smart because they now Sans needs to pick either they wanna pick the Faramis ult or the X Brock ult. Exactly. Yep. I think this is a smart smart move. Yeah, it's funny because like let's say Sans gets the ultimate of the Faramis, they have an export to deal with. Yeah. You know, the export can quickly take away the Nether Realm uh, that uh, Fnatic Onyx will have on their side here. Uh, going into the second phase without their gold laner though, you mentioned the plot. I, I feel like Fnatic Onyx will ban on the plot yep. in the second phase yeah. now. Uh, it'll be really good uh, get that mobility because right now you the EVOS lineup is very team fighting. Yep. You need at least one hero to open up the map, split post, be mobile. Agree. Oh. Agree. If you look at the Seemingly it's gonna be a trade in DPS. I was gonna say I was gonna say more DPS like the Edith would probably make a lot of sense, but the Uranus out of nowhere here. Against an X War it kind of works out. You can reach it from yeah. all the harassment in the lane. Yeah. I think they just, they just wanna like to mirror the X Borg and and since they already picked the Pyramids, I think uh, Ephos Glory doesn't have that option to punish from the mid lane for the Uranus. So I think it's a good pick to mirror the Axeburg and also the, the Fredrin, the tank jungler. I wonder if they're gonna ban out the carry Claude now yep. because uh, the Uranus does not like going up against those two, that's those fast basic attack heroes. Yep. Uh, seems like that's gonna be the logical ban here for that Agonic. If not, then they're gonna be playing a dangerous game. First the carry, yep. carry. yeah. If they're ever gonna open up the Claude, then that means they're gonna pick up something maybe like... Grok, Minotaur. Yeah. The heroes that the moment the Claude goes yep. in, you have to force the Purify out of it. Those bursts. Wow. Oh, they're respecting the Julian. Oh, wow. Do you think the Julian could come up here? Yes, I still think so. I mean, Fnatic Onyx, there's a reason they have left that jungle out and open. And they really like to do that. I mean, even from the you know old days of Aldo and Mars, that's what they like to do, especially for Kyrie. Leave the red side, especially when you're on red side, to give Kyrie an assassin pick. I think they can pick the claw and flex the Roger somehow. <laughs> I haven't seen that being done for a bit too long, but the fact that they banned them a ton kind of gets me thinking quite a bit. With the Fanny ban away as well. Assassins technically are still on the table. But it's getting risky with all these uh, survivability tools available. Are we going to see a Lancelot on Ky Kyrie on Lancelot? Maybe. Oh. I think it's not a bad pick here. Maybe on the last pick, but yeah. Yeah. It's it's it has to be last pick, it has to be last pick. Maybe. Is it okay against the Paramus? I mean, it's like one of the better in and out assassin, right? They can just first skill in, dash in, and then dash out, like, yeah. It's, yeah, in a way, because like assassins, in a way, can counter the Paramus. Because when you go in and go out like that, in the way that the assassins do, you bait out that Nether Realm. They will go for the yeah, drop first, the anticipating that a Claude yeah. pick again. 
Grok is, is phenomenal to cancel out, especially, I mean, technically, the dive of Evos, right? If yep. they want to Netherrealm and dive in, boom, smack with the Wild Charge. <laughs> and also, it denies, like, the car control that Dream's gonna put out with the G-Girl, the Minotaur. It's, it gets uh, mirrored by the Grok, so they have an early advantage on that side. And don't forget the barriers, right? Forcing it will yeah. kind of force Krokun to be a bit more conservative with his uh, stampede. If he wants to use it aggressively, he might get stuck behind a wall. We've seen the key boys barriers being so so cool. Ooh. It's gonna be a Beatrix Franco though, a bit okay. of a throwback. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, uh, like if they're gonna need a the dive, they're gonna need first Luzong. Oh wait though, no, they already have the EXP later. Oh, oh there's first yeah, this yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> it's, the, it's the Nolan. It's the Nolan. <laughs> It takes both of them out. But this is a combination that we've seen way back in the day, right? The Beatrix and the Franco. And that's something that is a bit of a power now for Evo's glory. Do you think it can work against Fnatic Onyx? Yeah, I think it can work because uh, Beatrix and Franco can burst the front line of Onyx. And also they have the Faramis to back up if ever they yeah, get engaged by the Nolan. In theory, it makes sense, especially with this combo. Even the Uranus, if you're stuck and suppressed and hit with a Bennett's Rage, we've seen that even the tankiest of members can get absolutely deleted. The last time Evos were in the same exact spot, 3-1. to one. It was an M1 World Championship, 3-1, to one, and they came back up against RFG Hoshi. We will be seeing that same storyline unfold in front of us today. Because it looks like the White Tigers, the people's champions, they're not going down without a fight. Until the not until they take the Fnatic on it. The champions of the galaxy down with them. Welcome to game number five. Welcome, Welcome into the land of dawn as we are still at championship point. Oh, for Fnatic on it. Was that Iron a hook? hook? It, it was, was an Iron Hook early. I don't know about whether he survived Purify. There's no first blood. I would love to see it over the, the clear, man. Give it a second. There we go. Pure, a flicker. Okay. Oh, it came out of nowhere. Dreams again on his signature pick. Onyx seems to want to try and go for it. And Keyboy doing the roundabout special. De denying, delaying the clear speed from Annabelle a bit more. Looking at the endless by Gamesmax. Master Assassin now for both gold laners, but Keyboy gets jumped on. Oh my god, Dreams, I don't know about that. The barrier as well is very, very low, still in the bush. Harry gets the passive down on Clawkun and backs away Brands though. Look at that. Thrill and Master Assassin. He wants to make sure that in the laning phase, we see it again, again, and again. And this, in this match, the laning phase becomes so much more important because then you have control. That's the same thing. That applies for the EXP lane, but even also for the gold lane. Get the rest of them. Fluffy going in with the agility. He definitely wants to be participating in a lot of these engagements. But against the Uranus, we'll have to see. Luffy can be annoyingly cutting those lanes again and again, keeping this Exburg just in the lane. So far, if we circle back into the gold lane, that level four will be a bit of a power spike, right? That's when Dreams and Brands can utilize it to look for a combo, perhaps maybe even a pick up into the side lanes. Meanwhile, nine seconds left on the next neutral objective spawn. The turtle gonna jump in. Annabelle at level four, but so is Kyrie. So it's a little bit of a 50-50 here, but we'll have to see how this pans out. Luffy? Luffy okay. Annabelle stuns it up. Taunt as well. Razor's Wrath committed too, but Luffy just dashes out of that and picks up also that XP creep. Oh, oh. Iron Hook from Dreams! Sans getting popped another moment. Tiny cannot block us. Bursts him down. The audacity for Sans to not have a purify. He won't be around. No another realm. But Evo and Lutpi trying to find some space. Watch out is available. He should be able to use a keyboard with a wild charge and a fracture. Come out of it with retribution. Oh. Meanwhile, Lutpi pops in a purify and the consecration gets out to safety. Fnatic on a trade that kill for a turtle. Yeah, Kyrie's gonna be able to get and secure that neutral objective for their team, despite things are looking like it went south in the team fight. And that's a problem, right? Sans on the Valentina, you don't wanna pick, you don't wanna have to be forced on the Purify. It's just not worth it, right? It cannot exab exacerbate the creativity that Sans has, especially with how many choices he has on the side of Evil's Glory. There's so many different ultimates that he can pick up that he can utilize according to the situation. So. 
That is actually something that Evo's Glory can exploit. Iron Hook into the bloody hunt and the damage comes down, but Keyboy just walks out of there, man. What a chad. Really is depending on Brands getting that item power spike. He's still too tanky for the early game. He is running the firmness for an extra the tanky. There's more Kyrie though. Just slashes clock and down. It's kind of funny though. We're seeing so many old metas, quote unquote, with a wild charge to secure the neutral objective, the Franco and Beatrix. Valentina like Ferriman. Exactly. <laughs> both teams are just pushed through the brink so far back, they have to go back in time. No power of nature. Boy already used it earlier. Anima also stealing away that gold oh. crab from CW. It's a small victory for Evo's glory, and they look to go towards the enemy purple, but, but Kyrie. There's two levels ahead of Annabelle. Spawning up a storm. Dreams looking for a way to shut him down, but hasn't really found the answer just yet, despite it already going to four minutes. Really, the longer this game goes, the more Ludpi is going to be a big problem here. For Evos, the only real way to try and shut him down is to just use all your resources to go on the ace really, but look at this. Stampede is an iron hook, but Sans has another round. Keep away. Oh, still able to flick around on the appraiser's wrath. Meanwhile, Kyrie stays busy, goes to the purple ball, steals it away, and still has the retribution. It's just all out pressure all across the map, but look at the response. Evo's immediately going for the turtle. Kibo will be trying to deter, but Ludpi is in the area too. No bloody hunt this time for Dreams. Brand swaps to the Renner, gets a shot down on the Ludpi, and the Renner's apathy, but Kyrie secures the turtle. Two turtles to FNOC. They're gonna have to try and build a snowball from here on out. And that's exactly the plan that they're going for. Two, E-Boy is going in very aggressive, being able to back Kyrie up. But at this point, right, a 2K gold lead, CW on the Roger, needs the snowball, still at a 0 0 0. What do Evo's glory do here? Oh, force the flicker there. Whoa! <laughs> that's the Uranus pressure, man. It's relentless. And you're seeing that he's always one step ahead from Fluffy. He's, he's trying to be as effective as he was in the previous game. But with this Uranus constantly pressuring, already with the Brute Rush Breastplate as well, it's going to be very difficult. And it's pulling away a lot of attention towards that EXP lane, which is allowing the rest of the map to be controlled by Onik. Especially with the fast clear from Kyrie. Already 2k gold ahead. BOD soon, right in time for the next neutral objective. Oh, oh. Good. oh has to purify out of oh. that man. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> Hold your breath, ladies and gentlemen. Kyrie, four levels ahead, wants to continue this. Keyboy has the wild charge, he can go for it. He decides to go for the power of nature instead, just revealing it. And Annabelle wins out the red tree battle, gets an iron hook and a bloody hunt under the turbine of the realm. Saves it, what charge! On to three, and this time no purify for Clocker, but Kyrie is able to get rid of the nether round. The Bennett's rage actually is able to save them from that dive. Oh, not agonic. That's another iron hook, but a purify from Lutfi. Grants them their safety very easily. CW like and pounce to the wave. The entire engage keyboy gets taken down, but both of these teams, they're not going down without a fight. And even there, Kyrie, already level 11. He's actually three levels ahead of Annabelle as the next neutral objective comes up. And we've seen that the wild charge is an optional, it's a very great option, a great tool. And Ludpi, there's still no solution just yet. Brands, not enough damage to really one-shot him just yet, even with the bloody hunt. Yeah, Brands just secured the BOD. Whoa. Is that a malefic roar afterwards? Is that the usual build for Beatrixes these days? Yes, it is. Build on the... Beatrix now, but I'm, I'm more concerned about Kyrie. He has a BOD already. Iron Hook onto the Grok. That's a bloody hunt as well with the Venice Raider. He's still able to survive. Watch charge to the back, and Kyrie gets a fracture down. But another round saves that. Boom! There goes Lepi. A bit more damage than he can tank out. Dream still going for some more. We done another realm. Evo still hold their ground. They know they have more combos available. Not Onik respect the potential. And it's back to the waiting game. And still very much even, even though there's a 2.3k gold lead just by Kyrie power farming. Yeah, so despite Kyrie being able to get this EXP lead, they still haven't been able to utilize it, but I might be wrong now. There was Apathy used up, but oh, Keyboy gets Ooh. Put back almost a read on that Stampede. Well, just like that, it's a rush take onto the turtle. Small victory from Fnatic Onik.
and for the most part, they've only been required to sacrifice the frontline members, although Sans has been taken out once. The longer this game goes though, I think there's gonna be more ways for Sans to show his creativity. For now, he's still waiting on some more item power spikes, but on the other side, Kyrie with the BOD. 2.6k gold ahead. The squishy members in the back need to be careful. There's a check that Clawquin might get deleted before he can even Ooh. use the spells as dreams. Which one engage play? Very risky play there. And he does not find the value of that play. Meanwhile, up top, Kyrie doing it quick or making quick work of that turret. Yeah, BOD over Melfi Grow second. So here it is, ladies and gentlemen. The fact that they have opted to go for the Paramus for Evo's glory, it does push them to clump up a spice and Kyrie on the Nolan with the mobility will be able to capitalize over it in these side lanes. So Evo's glory, they need to be aware of the housekeeping, right? Because even though there aren't any particular strong engages, even though it's not as messy and chaotic as the previous games that we've seen so far, here in game number five, Fnatic Onyx, they're playing the long game. They're, they're playing the macro game. And if this keeps on going the way that it does, it will be something that Fnatic Onyx can utilize to their advantage. and. Kyrie going to be able to get that orange buff away from Annabelle here in the ninth minute of the game. Gets it, gets out, see you later. For Fnatic Onyx though, again, it's reverting back to a really old style. For the longest time, in this, even in this match, you do see that when, they, when both teams are trying to push the waves out, there's a bit of risk involved there in case it's a big play. But now with the Uranus in the hands of Fnatic Onyx, for the most part, he is very secure, very safe when he's going for those pushes, which is why Kyrie can find the space to go and split push as well. It's like a double split push strategy for Fnatic Onyx for now. And you can see that Evo is there forced to react, sending members to the other side. Lord is available. It looks like they're confused, and Kyrie is five levels ahead of Annabelle up to this point now. Oh, or what? Look at that damage, Kyrie! On this Nolan, he is dealing the damage. He is wreaking havoc on the peoples and champions. A 4K gold lane CW picking up the GDS. It's gonna mean a lot more chase potential, a lot more burst as well. And look at that! With wow. the macro play, that was a clean take from Fnatic Onyx. Even though Evos have the tools to go for a pickoff, to go for a team fight, Fnatic Onyx just isn't letting them at all. To 3 to 0 oh, in favor of Evos Glory. But it's a 5,000 goal lead for Fnatic Onyx. But at this point, with Kyrie already at max level, it was an impressive five level lead. But now it's gonna get, start shrinking slowly but surely. So Fnatic Onyx also understand that there's some urgency to this game. And look at this, they're going to make a play for the third, but Dreams doesn't get the iron hook. Lupi looks for a chance to be annoying once more. This is gonna be them zoned away from the orange buff though. They're getting bullied. They're getting bullied in this game, and it's only been 11 minutes. Lupi. <laughs> with the seal as well. Cancel that wild charge, finding two. But Falcon purifies out of it very quickly. It's all just to get some space for this mid turret to fall. And the cannon minion is able to take it down. Bottom lane tier two as well. Kyrie doing work. It's so difficult for Evos right now. Because again, Lutpi always so healthy, so secure. Now, setting up for a dive towards Fluffy. Might be too aggressive though, another cover goes down. Lutpi gets pulled back in, Bloody Hunt as well. Locking him down, but another realm saves him. Kyrie in the back line, now goes for the Fracture, another realm now to respond it over. T-Boy still able to flick around, Kyrie gonna be hooked back, but he's able to dash it out across the base turret. Finds an angle to escape, of course. What? That was such a great pick off. And that should have been theirs, but Kyrie with the fast mechanics. With the fast hands, was able to do the fancy feet around it, dodging the damage, dodging the damage from the turret as well. Don't forget, the whole time, Lutfi is just healing around, running around, blocking hooks, blocking skill shots as well. And even if they go for a short engagement, Lutfi will be full HP before you even notice. 50 seconds to go before the next Lord, and you can bet that Fnatic Onyx will be active on the other side of the map. There's still no chance, no way for Evos to try and get the punish. They have the BOD and the Malefic War in the hands of Brands, but at the same time, how are they supposed to expand all that just for the Uranus, and even then still go for something that's not quite guaranteed? This is insane, ladies and gentlemen. 
7.5k with this. Wait, I, I can't even say this much action. Like, the lack of action happening. Fnatic Onyx again playing the map so, so well. And they're looking for more. Annabelle, they want to make him pay. They want to make him suffer. But Brands is going to be able to get both of these buffs. Is this the time where they're going to rely on Brands and Dreams to make in the plays for Evo's Glory? They have to if they want to contest this, but Keyboy and Lutpi again and again. This literal stone walls for Fnatic Onik. Whenever something is going down, you see almost a double flank from Lutpi and Keyboy, knowing that they are too tanky, too safe, too secure with the crop control immunity and the regeneration. And that blocks attacks and pathways for Evo's, but it also gives Fnatic Onik all the intelligence, all the vision. They always know where Evo's is gonna be because they see Lutpi just walk around. They see them through Lutpi. And now it's just a slow build up for Fnatic Onik, just the way they like it. Doesn't need to be too flashy this season. They don't need to be too crazy. Relying on those fundamentals, relying on just those small advantages that build up. It's a 9.2k gold lead and they are building up these waves as slow as they can. Because they know Evos. They have wave clear. They have a beat tricks to play with. But they're not pushing in that top lane. Not just yet, they're staggering it quite a bit. Sans will have to look for the Netherrealm. They want to go for a big play on the base here. The Keyboy looking for something. Trying to get that Lord in range of the charge, and it does not charge. They kill it right before. They deny that charge away from FNOC. Iron Hook into the bloody hunt. Into the back. Keyboy finds a wild charge, but that's going to be the last insanity used up. Lippy tanking a lot of these turret shots. Fluffy burning him down to the ground, but Lippy still able to survive. Not for long, though, as Fluffy finally gets that last. Bit of damage to take him down, but look at the trade. It looks good for Evos, but then you see the base, and two of the base turrets have been taken out. Yeah, there was a reason why they pushed in that top lane the way that they did, right? The fact that it was able to collapse the Lord in the bottom lane, and then they were forced to clear it. And so they were able to actually get the tower in the top side under the nose of Evo's glory as they were distracted and only one stance in their way. It's building that Lord advantage. You can even see it has a 1.9k gold advantage. I've been harping on and on about Lutpi on the Uranus, but the fact that he was able to buy so much time and force out so many resources is part of the reason why that turret on the top side also fell. 9k gold lead for now as Fluffy will be able to get a turret but Evos, they're just clumping together. This is also the next big problem. They are clumping together for the Nether Realm, and they are concerned if anyone walks out ever so slightly, Kyrie will be waiting for that opportunity, just pouncing on that opportunity to get a free kill. For those who have followed Kyrie and Onik since back then, you should know this playstyle that Fnatic Onik are playing. This is the banana split of Onyx BH, season eight, and the M3 World Championships. And so far, it's working, but the way it's already pushing by default. Seems like Evo's Annabelle actually is on the scene faster. That allows CW to go for the push. There's not enough damage for Evo's to try and shred this Lord down that fast. With the wave pushing in, now Fnatic Onyx have a window to make their move. They might go for the purple buff first. Oh, the barrier forced to flicker. These small wins, man. It all clumps up, it all stacks up, and it's a mountain now for Fnatic Onyx. Not even the purple buff given to Hanafel, not just yet. Even for the purple buff, they need to work for it. Okay, but they don't force a retribution there, so it's still being able to be used in oh. the next Lord take. Iron Hook purified away, Keyboy goes in for the wild charge. No real initiation now as Annabelle walks up forward, but now gets isolated. Fracture as well! Another realm just to help Annabelle escape, but look at the resources burnt out. Three ultimates, basically. And this is like a miscommunication for quite a bit. Seems like Lutpi went for the purify, but Keyboy went in to try and save him from the Iron Hook. Now with the Lord Evolve, there's a time for Onik to make their move. The Iron Hook doesn't land, so now there's a window of opportunity, and they have to send Fluffy. He's the only one that has the survivability, but it's so limited. 
The resources are now back up for Evo's glory. They want to go into the contest. This might be the time. I think they're waiting on the Nether Realm from Clockun, but as soon as that is up, they will go for the exchange. There we go. What towers? Kimoi finds the back. Tried to save Lutpi, but now no one's there to save Kimoi. Two members down, and Fnatic Onyx did not get the Lord. A great play by Evo's glory. That didn't work out at all the way that they planned it. But it looks like Fnatic Onyx, they still want to go in for the commitment. Are they looking for a bait here? Are they looking to prolong the series? But Evo's glory, the peoples are champions. They've been waiting for this moment, eight minutes in. It's a dangerous situation to be in with two members down for another 20 seconds. The wave was pushing for Onyx on the bottom side, but that's why the Franco becomes such a valuable tool. Forces the engage, and now shoes on the other foot, Exborg. Fluffy is the one exposing everyone. It's gonna be a Lord for Evos. You have to give it away, that's a Lord, and Evos glory finally. After 19 minutes, we see that sign of life. They were still in the lead in kills, but their first real objective is in the 19th minute of the game. <laughs> and look at the gold lead. Shrunken from 10k down to 5k. Definitely not the way Fnatic Onyx wanted to end this game out. But this is the problem when you go up against a team like Evos, who are so patient, who are so systematic, and they have the tools available to really go for a long, long base defense. The Nether Realm, the Beatrix with the um, insane amount of burst and wave clear, and as well as the x you can do the same thing with true damage. And of course, the DP frontliners like the Franco, like Annabelle on the Fredrin. There's a lot of players here that Fnatic Onyx will have to peel first before they can go for that crystal. And now Glocken, he picked up the glowing one. So with these frontliners, with the way that Fnatic Onyx have been playing for the past few minutes of the game, they're gonna start feeling that pressure. They're gonna start feeling that burn. Because the damage from uh, Faramis, it's not exactly as evident, but it builds up. And now Glocken with the glowing one. He'll be doing a lot of damage, particularly to Lutpi on the Uranus, who likes to stack up that HP. Lupi also has to recognize that he is no longer as tanky as he was in the early game. Up to that fight on the bottom side of the base for Evos, that was still pretty okay, but now he can be one-shotted. Evos have bought enough time to reach that level, and with Fluffy being the frontliner now, only by the ones that are finding it difficult to burn through his HP bars. The people, the champions, are making the impossible happen. They go in for the siege. Whoa. Let's see the defense. Harry's still in the mid lane right now. Lutpi gets targeted down as an iron hook not connecting. Lutpi gets another realm just in time, Sans. But look at another realm now popped in. The fracture gonna be used up to try to clear the Lord, but the waves are crashing down into the base. That is open. The Fnatic Onyx stay resilient in their own base. Sans picks up the Holy Crystal now with some more burst damage to play with. Dashes forward as a fracture. Now Faraga armor gonna be taken out. Bloody hop in the wild card comes in with the Gimoy. A good Nether Realm as Rhinos Apathy is able to catch Lupi and take his immortality away, but Lupi gets pulled back by the Shadow Stampede. Knocked out by Annabelle, burnt out by Fluffy, and they pick up the Killing Freak. One member, 7 and 0. Sans has fallen as well. Fnatic Onyx, their base is open wide. Fracture coming down. NCW tries to cover some damage. Won't be able to find Clock Good. But look at Braz, but over the nature he goes for the base. It's going to be Kyrie who tries to survive with Cloud and Winata. Will get hooked. My dreams on the Franco! That is Fnatic Onyx Nightmare! One team, one voice, one family. Evo's glory! Against all odds, pinned, pressured, battered. They pulled the impossible. They have forced another game against the unchallengeable, against Fnatic Onyx. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, grab your snacks, because we're going to game number six. We got ourselves a grand finals. The light of hope may have waned, but the voice of the family makes sure that the light shines brighter. It's not over 